right, I don't believe I've missed anything, but I'll double check again later. You guys should have six, and that's the total for the back hall area, I believe. 2nd of July, 1839. I received a letter today from the Algerian governor's office disclosing the fate of Herbert's expedition. About a week after my departure, Abdullah, one of the men traveling with us, returned from the desert. He was badly injured, as if maimed by a lion. The man rambled deliriously about the expedition being attacked by something horrible. The French quickly dispatched a search party to look for the expedition. After searching for days, they found the camp abandoned without any trace of Herbert or his men. Tomorrow, I'll retrieve the things they recovered from Herbert's tent at the customs house. I don't know what to make of it, but I'm worried for him. And that is why Daniel is lucky. He was sent off early. Something very tragic happened to them. Something very devastating. And it is 100% all surrounding the orb. The orb is the cause of it all. I believe we have nearly collected everything we need. 3rd of July, 1839. Today I picked up Herbert's things at the customs house. I dug through the trove of documents he had carried and found a log detailing the expedition. The nature of this text ranged from quick notes to colorful accounts of transpired events. I skimmed the pages trying to figure out what might have happened. May 17th, the day I was trapped inside the orb chamber, Herbert dryly states, We covered Daniel after one hour of entrapment. This confused me greatly. I was suffocating within minutes. How could I have lasted an hour? I continued reading the peculiar text. Herbert states his facts without judgment or passion, but suddenly I could read frustration into his text. He pushed his men to investigate the underground tomb, an effort which seems to have strained the minds of his men. Madness spread through the ranks, and Herbert had to take some extreme measures to continue. He finally visits the chamber himself, where he retrieves the orb to the surface. His account confuses me greatly. If he has the orb, what are those pieces in my drawing room? Man, I love the game. I love this game's story. Love the game too. That is truly fascinating. The only possible conclusion is that there is more than one orb and Daniel had stumbled into one of the many chambers holding one of the many orbs in that uh, cave system I think they were in. Daniel? What? Still having nightmares, I see. Yes. I can't shake them. They come every night. We'll put a stop to them. You'll see. It appears Daniel had evaded the shadow somehow. Even though he got the orb first, it was Herbert and his men that were lost first. I'm not sure why, maybe... No, there's only one shadow. I was gonna say maybe that each orb has its own shadow and theirs was more aggressive, but... There was only one shadow that uh, guardians over all the orbs, I personally think. And so... As for why Daniel lived longer, I really don't know maybe it's because 
Well, I already answered my own question earlier. He was lucky that he was sent away. He was much further away than they were. And so I guess the chain of events started with them because they had a completed orb and were also closer to the shadow. I don't know, it's, it's worth thinking on. take it back it's clear that the journal he lost was not in Algiers he's lost it here that is definitely a more recent memory fourth of July 1839 it's done the orb is assembled I was awakened by an exhausting nightmare shaking and sweating I retired to the drawing room with a cup of tea the relic pieces lay spread across the table as I'd left them, but somehow I knew how it was supposed to be. I fetched the tar, which I had prepared to fix the pieces together, and without fault I joined them, producing the orb I remembered so clearly. The tar proved unnecessary. It was pushed out from the joining pieces as they merged on their own, with no adhesive. The ancient stone relic now rests on my table. Its immaculate surface and perfect shape could have been molded by a factory. This is all too strange. I see. Perhaps this answers my question. His was not formed yet. I can't believe him. I'm so stupid. They had a fully formed orb, which is why they were targeted first. Then Daniel became next in line. Because... He was able to somehow form the orb out of fractured pieces. And why it was fractured in the first place is also worth noting. Perhaps Daniel is special in some way. He mentioned a strange familiarity towards the scrollings on the walls. This I still don't know to this day. I don't know if that's just an effect all people have looking at it. Or if that is a Daniel specific thing. But alongside that. Prolonged exposure to the orb seems to have given Daniel insight on how to form the orb. Unfortunately for him, of course. I think it's to do with memories. Alexander uses memory capsules that are clearly not of this world. Perhaps these orbs don't really have magical qualities. Maybe they're just an advanced form of storing memories. This is what Daniel saw when he touched the orb. Memories. I'm thinking maybe it is just a really advanced technological, maybe alien way of storing information, much like how we have our discs and drives and whatnot to store our information and perhaps this information is so great you're able to do so much with it even small amounts i don't know though i'm just rambling genuinely i know nothing about it but that is my theory for now oh, thank god there it is it is a good place to hide it then. But going back to that train of thought, um, perhaps Daniel is special in some way, perhaps he isn't. Uh, maybe it's just because he touched the orb, I don't know. Yeesh, I did not mean to break that. I'll think more over time on the potential specialness of Daniel. Now I think we've collected everything here, there's nothing else we really need to do, but if you stand over there it will spawn a grunt, it's supposed to teach you that you can hide in closets. Surprisingly not very utilized much in this game, at least not by me. That's primarily my fault though. 
So I'm tempted to utilize it. I could do one of two things. I could walk over there and spawn him, then run ahead and try and open the door. Or I can hide in the closet. But obviously the one I'm going to choose is the one that guarantees the most safety. Well, that ruined my joke. I was going to stand over here then. I'm scared. I was going to do it, but then I got scared. I saw him. He's in pausing. He's, he's intimidating. Really, he is. That genuinely scared me. He doesn't even look scary. It's just the fact that if I die, I have to do it all again. It makes him ten times more scary. I didn't have to do this. I could be on my merry way to the study by now. Let's see if we can get a little look at the famous grunt. He didn't hear that, did he? Brilliant. Now let's walk directly outside where he surely should be, but he won't because game logic. Sir William Smith, that is a familiar name. Was he the guy that informed Daniel of the... Uh, the glass collapsing in on itself? He might have been that guy, I think he was. Either way, his fate mustn't have been good, judging by the text we just saw. What? 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 Why is this Superman's torso? And why is it outside the door? I demand a lot of things and the explanation is more certainly one of them. But I know I won't get it, so... Chandelier, you go. Okay, regrets were made. I can never hit those shots. Taylor, this guy I don't know, but I feel like he's probably mentioned him. This is yet another one of my favorite areas, the guest room. This, the atmosphere in this game is truly immaculate. But certain levels just hit that sweet spot. The guest room is one of them. I used to play a lot of Amnesia custom stories back in the day. And custom stories often utilized this wall texture. And just this general area for their stories. And being in like the guest room and the study, areas like that, just really hits that nostalgic spot. I'm sure it's the same for a lot of you guys at home too. You don't realize just how much filler stuff there is until you like, really pay attention. Like, why are there two expensive looking pots? Excuse me, those aren't pots. Uh, I don't know what you would call them. I'm sorry, I'm uh, not very knowledgeable, but these things, those expensive looking glass objects. The, why are there two of them in this area? This place is so overcrowded. I believe that's on purpose, though. I don't, I wouldn't necessarily call it filler room. Pretty sure it's on purpose. It's meant to be overcrowded. To create a sense of unease, I would guess. I love it. I love it when you can see outside in this game. You rarely get to see outside. Excuse me, you're giving me a dictionary and not voice acting it? 
<clears throat> you know what? Let me get. Let me just take a drink of water real quick. The music playing right now is what they'll play at my funerary when they funerary funeral when they find my dead body in this chair because my throat is about to die. To my most trusted student and friend, Johan Weyer, the most remarkable thing happened as I was traveling through the Prussian woods this summer. I finally found one of those orbs I have been looking for the last 20 odd years. It is as inexplicable as the Heliodromus described it in the Hortus Conclusus. Making up words now, are we, buddy? It was as it was. It was as it was. It was as it was told about. It was as it was told about an underground Mithraic temple crowned with the unearthly artifact. The orb was big enough to fill my cupped hands and the texture was smooth and jagged. Its color washed while rich. Contrast is not enough to describe its nature. It was an impossibility, an artificial paradox captured within stone. I was staying in a nearby village called Altstead investigating one of the antique trails when I finally found the cavern. I went inside and suddenly I could verify the truth of these enigmatic artifacts. They were real. Whew. As you can understand, this is the most important discovery of my life, but it also has become my greatest fear. As I entered the underground chamber, I could feel that I was trespassing. Because of my curiosity, I did my best to fight these instincts and fetch the orb from its place. I scrambled out of the chamber and into the woods. I could sense something was following me. It bared loudly as it closed in. The beast, this guardian of the orb, was relentless in its pursuit. I made my way to a nearby ravine where I stumbled upon some men fishing in the lake. I tried to warn them as I passed. But fortunately, they remained as I continued my escape. When I heard their cry of pain echo throughout the valley, I felt such a tremendous sense of relief, thinking I would be spared. That's a fascinating response. I quite like that it wasn't the guilt he felt. Uh, I mean, as bad as that sounds to say it, um... It, it, the response makes sense. I mean, he tried his best to warn them as he was passing them. Suddenly, a blue shimmering light engulfed me and the colors of the forest were washed away before my eyes. I kept running through the bleak surroundings. The trees had turned charcoal. Black with leaves of cinder, the ground covered in murky water. I pressed on through the drenched land as the, colo as the glowing ember gave way to the rising wind and rained on me. I could hear pleading screams in the distance, and I joined in pain as fear and fear overtook me. I fell to the ground gasping for air. This certainly must sound strange, but I had been carried miles away across the Alps to a grassy field outside Genoa. The Guardian had taken the orb from me, but still until this day, I fear its return. Sometimes I lay awake at night listening for the howling cry I heard in the forest. It has been nearly a decade since that day and I still haven't been able to write about the incident. The last time we spoke, you told me about your interest in ongoing research into the mythic orbs, and I realized I owed you the truth about my visit to Alstead. Your friend and mentor, Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa. A long but very interesting note. These words here I didn't know about. I should probably look into it. I don't know if it's a real thing or if it's just part of the game. As stupid as that is to say, it's probably a real history thing though. Maybe even a real current thing that I don't know. 
but I'll look it up after it's done or someone can tell me about it. However, Agrippa went in search of the orb. He had found it and instantly regretted it. But it's not like he wasn't warned, he was and he went ahead anyways. This beast that followed him for some reason has a duty to protect the orb but I don't know why exactly or even what this thing is. It hunted Mr. Agrippa and attacked two men that were, or some men that just happened to be there which is very unfortunate. This thing seems to attack anything and everything in its path to get the orb back. This tells me it's not just simply a duty out of like instinct or order. This tells me it's personal. This thing is hunting after Agrippa to get to the orb. But it's angry to me. It feel it feels like it's angry. It's got pained cries and it attacks anything and everything in its path to get the orb back. These people had nothing to do with Agrippa's little crusade. Or not crusade, but expedition. And yet it attacked them. It's angry, it's running after this orb. It needs it back or it just really wants it back. It feels like there's something personal here and I don't know what it could be. Or why it has such a connection to the orb. Maybe it is instinct, maybe it's a natural con uh, connection to this orb. Nature seems to be attacked too on its pursuit. It, I do believe it's capable of moving around without causing destruction in its wake. So I believe the destruction of the area is also a purposeful outburst of anger or some over or some other emotion. But something that I can get from this is that the orb is definitely personal. But at the same time, it hurts those men, but it does not hurt Agrippa. It simply whisks a gripper away to a different place, miles away. This very obviously traumatized a gripper. It's so interesting that it keeps him alive. I don't understand. Or maybe I do. It seems to have taken the orb from him first. And upon getting the orb back, its anger was stilled. And so it took Agrippa far away to stop him from coming back for the orb. But it didn't want to kill him anymore. Or anything else for that matter. And after getting the orb, it probably peacefully walked back to its chamber. That was a long but fascinating read. One of my favorite notes for sure. I say we stay away from the orbs. I mean, this thing is peaceful, all things considered, so long as you stay away from the orb it cares so much about. Just had to check. Make sure I had been in that room. I was in that room for so long I forgot if I had been anywhere else. Hmm. Bad things happened here, that's for sure. See what 
what you have to offer. <clears throat> ah, what a mess. I should have sharpened the saw. But I can sense it. It's definitely there. I am so sorry, Mr. Bunny. Uh, I wonder if I can get him back. Okay, good. Anyways, that was grisly. That was horrible. That, that traumatized me. I'm very unhappy now. Something consistent with Alexander and his experiments. At least in this area. It doesn't seem to be pain, but killing. First, he was trying to get whatever he wanted through artificial means using chemicals. But that failed, and now he's killing things. But inhumanely, using a rusted blade to cut off a dog's head. And the way he's cut into this rabbit here is terrible, to say the least. And this bird. I can't see very well in the glass. Hold on a second. Yes, there is a cut down the middle starting from the right side or left side of the neck down to the very base of the wing. It even appears as if... No, I don't think the legs are cut off. They just look weird. What I'm getting from this is he's aiming for quick deaths, but at the same time, he still wants the pain to be experienced for whatever reason. Like, these are... Oh dear, human skull. These are, like, grisly ways of killing a living creature. But cutting off the head would be fast, all things considered, I would assume. That would explain the dog noises I hear. I'm not sure why he's doing this specifically. What his goal here is, what he's trying to get from this. Is his goal to hurt them, kill them? He wants something out of it, clearly. But I don't know what that is, not right now. Yay, another thing I get to read. Canis? Canis? Canine? No, that's not canine, but I know it's like the, from the same word, I think. Canis lupus familiaris? 16, 1658? That's what, like... 220 years? 230 years ago, maybe? From where Daniel is right now? That's, that's old. This is an old note. And also proves Alexander's supposed immortality. The very least, he has a long life. After a short study, it is clear that the agitation found among humans can be found in a dog. Fear and pain induce stress, which seems to trigger a endogenous response, causing the animal to burst with energy. I believe that the catalyst is produced in the brain. It is difficult to determine what exactly, uh, where exactly, and what exactly it is. But I can sense it. It reeks of cosmic genesis? There is an inherent problem in harvesting this energy since the creature is bound to die from this exercise. I must refine this process of torture to enable any real work to be done. 
more experiments must be performed, but it seems that only human beings are able to produce the amount necessary. It might be their ability to appreciate the severity of the process that ultimately, ultimately augments the experience of terror. Okay, so he needs some kind of energy that the brain produces. He tried creating it artificially, couldn't, so he moved on to animals. But animals didn't produce what he wanted. This definitely, this torture and pain that he's causing doesn't seem to be personal, it seems to be very... I don't know what the word would be, not professional, maybe clinical? I don't quite know, but... Profes um, personal or not, this is still terrible. But there's a energy that the brain produces, and humans are the only ones that produce that amount. Unfortunately, we know where that goes. It makes sense, I guess. Human brains may be able to produce more due to the understanding of what's going on. It does make sense. That is quite grisly indeed. There we have the man, the myth, the legend himself. And he's a complete tool. He has his initials on his outfit. Anatomy Frontiers, 1658, January 9th. Further disappointment. The Antiquarian's latest findings yielded nothing. I'm still unable to grasp the inner workings of life and its relation to the power I sense within it. I shall pursue more books on the subject, but I suspect it will be in vain, since no research has been made in my particular interest. I must attempt to fill that void myself. Clearly humans emanate more of the energy I seek, but I hope animals will suffice, as they would prove less of a hassle to acquire. <gasps> oh my gosh, I can't believe that actually just scared me. You get back in there. And stay. These sounds of the dogs, the sounds of the crying and everything, with the further um, information gathered from all this, that they're, these are the noises of living creatures being tortured, it's really upsetting. It further enhances the fear built up upon hearing all of this in their supposedly empty castle. Yep, not going there, not yet. Going there right now, actually. Ah, an owl. That's lovely. I quite like owls. Right, oh, so as usual, you're supposed to throw something at this. However, you are able to break it with your hands. Daniel's hands are probably very scratched up now, so I don't know if it's worth it. This is one of the few times you can go outside. And you can truly see the infinite darkness Brennenberg is surrounded by. 
I am not sure as to why. I'm I don't know if it's Altstead or Brennenberg Castle specifically, but this place is shrouded in darkness. And I don't I really don't understand why, but it makes perfect atmosphere for a horror game. I wonder if the shadow is big or powerful or obviously or both. To push down a tree like that, it's either a really big f creature, and I'm assuming it's a creature because the Kurnerk is from the same dimension, and it's invisible because it's only like partly connected to this dimension. And I'm assuming the shadow is the same. It's either so powerful it can push down a tree, or so big it pushes down a tree. And I don't know which. And I'm not sure that there's much evidence to either side. The flicker, the bluish light. <laughs> Daniel has no idea what this is. He has no idea. That's hilarious. When will it be my turn? Have I not shown restraint? My patience spans centuries. From where I came, mankind is not even waste is not even wasted a breath. Yet I bow to you. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble in the center. Mankind is not even wasted a breath. I don't understand what he's saying there, to be honest. Could it be a typo? Mankind is not even a wasted breath. No, that wouldn't make much sense. No, go back! Well, whatever. From where I came, mankind is not even wasted a breath. Yet I bow to you. I have done so much for you, and I have gained nothing in return. Agrippa, I trusted you. It was I who, in all fairness, should have entered that gate. Interesting. So they have succeeded in what they were doing already. However, it was not Alexander who was let through. It was somebody else. Perhaps even Agrippa. Obviously, Alexander is very upset about this. This person he loves, he is still far apart from them. I don't know how I feel about not letting Alexander go through, but I'm sure I'll get an explanation later on. If the elevator breaks down again, make sure to use the steam engine to build up pressure before channeling it into the machinery. Adjust the levers to get the right amount of pressure inside the chamber. The meters should read up A and down A. Make sure the flow is set according to the following chart. Trinity steam set functions, four phase amplitude, complete steam flow cycle. Note that the machine will not check proper configuration until all rods are inserted. I believe we have gotten everything in this area. I don't know for sure. But I'm pretty confident that we are done here. This video is looking to be very long. Also, if I'm right and that thing is just really big, that means it's standing right there looking at me. And that is terrifying.
very interesting again I presume that is Daniel it would make sense if he was on medication whoa 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 I thought I'd threw you earlier what's this about Ah, we are done here. The baby fountain. Herbert, how did we find this place? An old friend back in Algiers gave me a map. Why isn't he with us? Didn't he want to come? He wanted to, Daniel, but things don't always turn out the way we planned. Interesting. Also, I had to do a double take when I saw this. I was like, whoa, 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 what? Anyways, the baby fountain, truly an iconic sight. I should have showed you it while it was just pouring water. But now it's pouring blood for some reason. And this guy's dead in it. I don't know. This is clearly like an actual guy. It's not just a hallucination. This is a dude. He died here while we were out somewhere. Oh my goodness. I'm not even kidding. My heart dropped. My eyes widened. That... That freaked me out so much. So he was a hallucination. That was not a real body. I'm sweating. Oh, that was such a good scare. I didn't even I've never seen that in this game up to this point. Now our next location is the machine room. Let's be going. Oh, that's really interesting actually. You're up too, huh? Alright, I'm excited. Are you guys excited? This is the final area before we move on from the next roadblock, that being the elevator. And then we'll have to sort out the third roadblock. I believe there are four roadblock areas in this game. I might upload this video... Um... Okay. I might upload this video as part of the... Like, each video will be a roadblock. The first video was the whole roadblock, but if I upload this second video as the whole roadblock, it'll be spanning over two hours, I think. So I might not do that. I'll think about it. 5th of July, 1839. Today, I went to the university looking for answers. I was able to sneak into Herbert's office and pick up an address book along with some relevant textbooks. Professor Taylor at the Faculty of History was very helpful, and I managed to approach the subject of the orbs. The most interesting aspect was the prevalent trace they had left in our culture. The mythic orbs may in fact have inspired the Globus Cruciger, which so many royal regalia holds to this day. In ancient times, the orbs were held by priests as a symbol of the sun and its power. As I was leaving, I overheard a disturbing conversation. Sir William Smith, the geologist, was killed last night. Less than a fortnight had passed since I'd asked for his expertise. I know it's silly, but I can't help feeling responsible somehow. That is really interesting, and that would be the Professor Taylor we heard about that met an unfortunate fate. The second one, I believe, after Sir William. Further showing the shadow's presumed anger as it takes everything in its path to get the orb. Also, it's been a long time, so I don't know what this is, which is great. Ho ho ho, what did I say? Don't know what this is. I'm a genius. My memory is impeccable. So yeah, this is the uh, solution to that puzzle. We'll be needing this, so I'll throw it down the stairs.
I just love the graphics and the way this game looks. I know it's dated, but it's nostalgic for one thing, but it is also genuinely creepy. Lovely atmosphere. I know I've said it many times, but it truly is a lovely atmosphere. 14th of July, 1839. I've read every book I can find on the subject. While rich in legend and hearsay, my knowledge is lack for the insight I crave. I've sent letters to many in Herbert's address book and received answers of varying importance. Today, I got one which differed greatly from the others. From a baron in Prussia. He said nothing about the quaint stories of priests in underground temples. He didn't even mention them. He simply wrote, I know. I can protect you. Come to Brennenburg Castle. Signed, Alexander. What am I to make of this? Protect me from what? Is someone after me? I looked up Brennenburg and traced it to the Prussian woods near the Baltic Sea. While being the least informative letter I've received, it causes me greatest distress and interest. As I write, my thoughts are drawn to my nightmares in which a most disturbing sound calls to me. A sound defying description. A voice from the void. The last few weeks have been awful with so many sleepless nights dreading a repeat of those horrid dreams. Tomorrow, I shall visit my physician, Dr. Tate, in hope that he can provide me with sedatives to help me sleep. I do feel quite bad for Daniel. This is all very tragic. It's a very tragic situation. I said tragic twice, I'm like repeating myself, but it sucks, dude. Just like this sucks. Note that there are only two spare rods left in the storage for the elevator machinery. Make sure to only discard the ones which are badly damaged and keep the others in the inner study rooms in case all three would crack again. I love the way Daniel speaks by the way, I love the way they all speak. Trinity obviously goes to triangle, for phase obviously square, and floor obviously circle. As I said, puzzles in this game are very easy. this hope it lands in the right area it didn't great well it did land in the right area but I hoped it would just magically go onto the wall like this okay just ignore that that happened and let's read this note 17th of July 1839 how has this escaped me they're all dead limbs scattered head split down the middle their skin flayed as if boiled I feel like I'm falling into myself. What's happening? Sir William Smith, Professor Taylor, now Dr. Tate. Is it following me? How can it not be? It's the damn thing I brought from Africa. Something is after me. I have no choice but to trust the Baron. He better know what he claims. If he is wrong, I suspect he'll regret it as well. Hmm. No doubt Daniel felt very responsible, very guilty, but it is not his fault, I would say. I'm gonna have a little fun and see if I can just legitimately shovel these things into the... Nope, that sucks, not doing it. No, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Alright. To be fair on myself, there was a huge mic in my face, so... 
you know, my aim might not be on point, but it's not necessarily my fault either. Lovely. Now that this is sorted, we can go through Carnage's lovely whatever this is. There wasn't anything there. You can't tell me that there was something there to hit me. It's so annoying. It's like being bitten by a mosquito. Also to comment on that loading screen. Long-winded, strange stories often don't comfort people. It makes sense that no would comfort Daniel. Just the simple words, I can protect you, go a long way. And that is ultimately what lulled Daniel into this situation. Unfortunately though, Alexander was right. The only thing awaiting Daniel in that moment was death. So in a sense, it's good he came here, but in another sense, this sucks. Case in point. Nice, that was one cool guy. I bet he used the tip of his index finger and nothing else. Come this way. What was that? Forgive me, I should have warned you. One of my responsibilities as a baron is that of a prison warden. This is where criminals are locked up. Like a dungeon? Very much so. Come, don't linger. Very interesting indeed. And also, this is the start of the third roadblock. So I will be ending this here. Now, I don't know if I'm going to upload this all as one thing, because that would be a really long video. I might just do that, though. We will see. If I do decide to do that, thank you so much for watching this whole video. It really means a lot. I hope the... I'm doing my outro. I hope the audio and visuals were much more improved to the previous one. And also... Nah, actually, I can't think of anything else to say. Just thank you. I'll see you guys in the next one. I certainly hope so. Have a good one. Oh, I know. I remember what I was going to say now. So, you should have 18 oil, 6 ladanum, 85 tinderbox, 13 nodes, but I'll just double check. Fourteen knots, my bad. Eleven diaries. And that should be it. If this is what you have, then you've done everything right. Well done. Right, now I'm done. Thank you everyone so much. I'll see you in the next one, I certainly hope. Have a splendid day or night, depending on when you're watching this.